Why would fax pages important on your website? What are the benefits? This video learned valuable tips from two highly accomplished online professionals. First, Chris Palmer from Chris Palmer SEO, as well as WPCrafter.com. Question and answer pages on your website are great for SEO website optimization and help customers. The format of an FAQ page questions followed by answers is a natural fit for search engine optimization, specifically for long tail keywords. You can take advantage of this by making sure that the questions on the page include the main keywords for your product service, without sounding stiff or robotic. Formatting the questions so that they bolded or had a subheader, H3, H2, etc. tags used around the text, can improve the SEO value of the pages more so you can add schema structured data to questions and answers pages for a featured snippets boost. In today's video, I'm going to share with you a much smarter way to start implementing facts, structured data, so you can get a competitive advantage within the guidelines over your competition. My name is Chris Palmer, and let's not waste any time. Let's get directly into the information. Now, I will be sharing with you the template completely complimentary. You can get that in the description. Let's get into the content now. All right. So first and foremost, in this video, I want to answer two questions that I consistently get from clients. I'm also going to cover the guidelines so you know you're within Google's guidelines, so you're not getting in any trouble as you're gaining an advantage. And then on top of that, at the end, I'm going to literally show you step by step how you can literally take this uh, template that I'm going to share with you add the question and answer get a competitive advantage regardless if you're using WordPress if you're using an HTML site or any other site it doesn't matter I'm gonna walk you through it so again let's not waste any time let's get directly to the information so first and foremost let's cover these guidelines because I've been getting these questions very consistently one do I need a standalone fax page all right to implement the fax schema now per the guidelines it says if anyone else is actually answering the question, okay, then that's a Q&A. Also, if you are only listing one question, then that's also Q&A. Now, any time that you have a list, a list, so more than one question on a page list, as you can see here, you can implement the fact schema. Now, why would I want to do that? Let me go ahead and share with you why this is so important. Not only can I get more density and get more words within the code, but I'm also giving Google a lot of insight of exactly what I'm talking about on the page instantly. And the best part, I'm taking up space inside the SERP or the search engine results page. Let me give you an example for my friend, Craig Campbell. So if you search CTR manipulation, he actually is getting the rich snippet. So he's getting the snippet and taking more space. As you can see here, see these little drop down menus here? This is called rich snippets. So this is how he's gaining the rich snippets by utilizing facts schema within his page. This is a competitive advantage. Again, just like I just talked about, you get to add the words to the page, you get the structure of the page, you let Google understand what the page is about instantly. It's super helpful and it takes up space. This is a SERP enhancement, search engine results page enhancement. It's awesome. So this is what it looks like and this is what you're going for. Now let's get back into answering these questions. And then of course, I will show you how to do this step by step. And I've given you the template so you could just start doing it, implementing it on your pages. So standalone fax page, I say yes and no. Yes, you want to have a standalone fax page on your website, but that does not mean that that's the only place I can use fax schema. Okay. Now, number two, do I need a standalone fax section on the page? Now, I drew a little diagram here, and this is what I mean. So this is a web page, this little square here. This is the content, and then a lot of people will write facts and then put like three bullets and then do an ans ask question, answer question, ask question, answer question. You can do that, but why muddy up the page? Google wants everything to flow. Remember the recent passages update or remember when you go to a page and Google will literally pull out a little piece out of the content and create a snippet, right? So if Google's already doing this, Google's already looking for this, why not just let it flow within the content? Let me give you an actual example of what I mean. So if we take a look over here for Plumber New York, 
The number one ranker is not implementing these types of strategies, even though we should. So if you take a look here at Hub Plumbing NYC, here's the page that he has on his website for water heaters. Now I've done a source code lookup for schema. He's not implementing any schema on the page, but we most certainly should be. Now with that being said, I want you to take a look at this page. Even though he's a number one ranker, we could still take up more places in the SERP. We can have more of an advantage. Push down Yelp. This is absolutely imperative. So let me show you what this looks like. So if we take a look at this page, it's relatively well written. But as you can see, and this is I'm sure this is how your website is, right? You're already answering questions within the page. You don't have to write facts and section it all off. It can be weaved into the content, make it flow a lot better, make it a lot better user experience, which is what Google wants. Remember, we can do this. It's within guidelines because it's a list. Now, with that being said, let's come back in here. You can see here, like, is your water heater leaking or won't stay lit? That's a question. Here's the answer. You're already doing this within your content right so why not get an added bonus of adding it to the facts schema here's another one tankless water heater installation or better yet how do i get a tankless water heater installed question answer right next what do i look for in tankless water heater question answer remember this is facts or cute this is facts schema structured data now let me show you how to implement this literally step by step let me show you the template that i've created for you which you could get in the description or the first comment. So let's take a look here. So this is a fact schema template that I shared with you. I'll give you the link. On top of this, we can see here, all this is is LDJSON. This is what's recommended by Google. That's why I'm sharing it. On top of that, if you take a look in here, see how it says question, then answer, question, then answer, question, then answer. We wanna use three. It needs to be a list. Generally, Google is going to reward two or three results. Some results I've seen up to five. What I mean by reward is remember the CTR manipulation example I gave you where Craig, my good friend, is getting these SERP enhancements, right? We could get up to five. I generally only see three, so add three. That's why I put it into the template. If you wanna add more, feel free to go ahead. But let me go ahead and share this with you. So again, we're in the guidelines. We're using the template here. And then here we go. We're going to do a live example of how we would go about adding this. This could be for any page, whether it's HTML, whether it's WordPress, doesn't matter. I'll do the WordPress example first. All right. So watch this. So here's the template that Chris Palmer SEO gave you. We'll go over to the website and let's say this is your website. We're going to grab this right here. What do I look for in tankless water heater? Because this is a question and an answer. I go inside of my template and then see where the quotation marks are. See where it says question and then name. See these two quotation marks? This is where you ask the question, all right? And then answer question. See this type answer and then see where it says text and there's this text box here. All you have to do is grab a small little snippet or a small passage from this particular section. So we'll grab this first little bit here, which is keyword rich. Again, this will increase our density on page and we're gonna get a SERP enhancement. This is a big bonus for you, my friend, right? I want you to start doing this. This will help you immensely. Now inside of here, all you have to do is see these two quotation marks, paste it in here. See how I did that? Now again, well, I'll do one more example. Let's say, t uh, how do I get a tankless water heater installed? right? This is already in the content. We're going to weave it in and add it into the template. So again, we go to these quotation marks, which are here by name. We'll add the question. Then we grab a little passage or a little snippet. How do I get a water heater installed? We'll go to the first period. Uh, actually, it, you can go to the second period here. It's just a paragraph. That's perfectly fine. We'll go over here to the template, which I've included. Check the description and first comment. We'll add that right in here. And then there we go. We can grab this script. I would highly recommend using three so we can get the maximum possible inside of our snippet. Now, let me show you how you would add this to your WordPress website. Very, very simple. There's multiple ways. There's one, you can use a plugin. So there's a magnitude of plugins, SEO plugins. You could choose if you already have it, you can add custom code. But if you don't want to use plugins and you just want to add it to very particular pages, let me show you what to do. 
Now, if you come over here to this website, I don't know whose it is, but as you can see here, this is your regular WordPress setup, all right? Now, on this page under posts or page, there's a little button, there's three dots in the top right-hand corner, as you can see here, right? In the top right-hand corner, there's a thing called code editor. When you open up your code editor on any page, any post, remember, go to any of your pages or posts, go to the actual page, the three dots in the right-hand corner, get the drop-down menu, go to the code editor. Inside of code editor, you're gonna see, see how this is all written out inside of here, as you can see right here? What you're looking for is it'll say HTML page, it'll say head. It's gonna say head, and then it's gonna say head with a slash. All you have to do is add the code in between there. That's it. That's all you have to do. Now, let's say you're using any other website. Maybe you're using a builder. Whatever the builder is, you always add it into the head. If you have any questions about where to add it, please revert to developers.google.com forward slash search forward slash docs, all right? They'll tell you exactly where to add it. All the information is right there. They give it to you, all right? Now, let's say that you're utilizing any other website. Maybe it's HTML. Here's how you'll go about doing this. So this is a cPanel. What you'll do is you're gonna go to your public HTML inside of your uh, cPanel, and whatever page you're going to, it, wh whether it's the index page, maybe it's another page, whatever the page is, you go to that page, what you'll do is you'll go to your edit, edit, and here's what I'm talking about. Let me make this big so you have no problem seeing it. All right, as you can see here, see this, it's HTML, like you won't see this, but see how this says head, right? Now that's the head without the slash, so that's the beginning of the head tag. Now if we scroll down, see how there's a slash and then it says head here? This inside of here is where you want to add in your snippet code. You can add anything you want in this section. You can add your Facebook pixel. You can add your Google tracking. You can add your schema markup and structured data, right? So this is how you do it. This is the section you do it in. It doesn't matter if you're WordPress, HTML, you're doing HTML and CSS. If you're using anything, you can always add stuff to the HTML. All right, so this is how you start grabbing rich snippets from your competitors. This is how you get a competitive advantage by utilizing facts, schema markup, or structured data. My name is Chris Palmer. If you have any questions related to schema markup, structured data, facts schema, how to get more rich snippets, anything at all, always feel free. Go ahead and ask in the comments below, and I always look forward to seeing you in the next on page SEO, structured data, how to get rich snippets, video. Have a wonderful day. Woo! In this video, you're gonna learn what FAQ schema is and how to add it to your website. First, let's answer the question of what FAQ schema is. Simply put, it's code you wrap around content that tells search engines that it's formatted in a question and answer format. In a nutshell, schema helps search engines better understand the content on your website so they can take that content and display it in different ways. For example, there's this content that you see on many different search queries in Google that says people also ask, better known as PAA, and it shows a list of questions in question and answer format. So if I want to see the answer to this question, I can click here and I can get the answer and then it will show the link to the website where Google has taken this answer from. So when you add schema to the content on your website, Google's just going to understand it better and it can take it and use it in creative ways like this that will get you more traffic onto your website. And you can easily add this FAQ schema to blog posts to add more depth to those posts or 
if you have a business page and you want to have some FAQs related towards your industry, it's very simple to add these to your website as well. So let's go ahead and get started. Step one, we need to add an FAQ schema plugin to your website. Now, the good news is you might already, and it's highly likely that you already have an FAQ schema plugin on your website, but I'm going to show you a few right now and you can decide which one you want to use. The first option would be if your SEO plugin on your website, if you have one, already has an FAQ schema Gutenberg block. So I use Rank Math and Rank Math does have an FAQ schema block. Rank Math also happens to be a free SEO plugin. The next option, if you use Gutenberg to build the content in your blog posts or on your website is to use the free Cadence Blocks plugin that has this FAQ schema built in. Now, for those of you that use Elementor, there is a free FAQ schema plugin for Elementor. However, it's not that widely used and I probably wouldn't recommend using this. Instead, check if you use any third party Elementor blocks such as ultimate add-ons for Elementor. And in this case, you can see here, it does include an FAQ schema block for Elementor. I want to give you a little bit of advice. Whatever FAQ schema plugin you use on your website, choose wisely because you're going to be sort of married to it because once you've built content using the one that you've chosen to build out the FAQ schema content on your website, it will be very painful in order to switch later on because when you disable that plugin, it will no longer be formatted with this schema. So just choose wisely. Now on to step two create your FAQ content on your website. Like I said earlier, you can add FAQ content to individual blog posts to get them to rank better and pull in more traffic or on various pages of your website. I'll go ahead and add it to a blog post. So I'm gonna to go to posts and I'll click on add new. I'll give my blog post the title. And now let's use the FAQ schema block found in rank math. I'll click right here. I'll use a backslash and I'll start typing FAQ and here it is FAQ block by rank math. I simply click on it to select the block and here's where I will put the question. Here's where I will enter the answer. And then if I want to add additional FAQs, I can click this option here to add a new FAQ and keep adding them as I need to add them. As you can see, I just added three FAQs that are completely filled out and I can continue adding as many FAQs as I need to. Next, I'll show you how to add FAQ schema using the free cadence blocks. I'll click right here and I'm going to do a backslash and the FAQ schema is actually found in the accordion block for cadence blocks. So I'm going to select the accordion block and then I can choose an initial style. The cadence blocks option will give you more styling options than what is found in rank math if that appeals to you. So I'll go ahead and choose this one right here and I can add my title right there and right here I can add the answer. Now with cadence blocks, there is an option that we need to enable to wrap the FAQ schema around this block. So let me go back into the accordion parent item and you can see right here when I click on the navigation, I'll click on accordion and here on the right panel is all the options for the accordion. But when I scroll down to where it says structure settings and I click that, here's an option that says enable FAQ schema. I'll just need to toggle this on and the FAQ schema will automatically be added to the accordion accordion and all of the options that I've added there. And that's it. You've now added FAQ schema to your website. Now you might be asking yourself, and this is a little bonus tip in the video, is how do you find these FAQs that you should be adding into your content? So if you're going to add this to blog posts, which I highly recommend, how do you find what people are asking about the topic you're writing about so that you can make sure that you add that to your blog post? 
let me show you a free Chrome web browser extension that you can add to Chrome that will automatically harvest those P AA questions that I showed you earlier in the video. Now this only works with the Chrome web browser and it's a free SEO extension. You don't even have to sign up for an account. It's called SEO Minion. And when you add SEO Minion to your website, it will pull off information of pages that you're on. So what you would do is you would open up Google and do a search term related to the content of whatever blog post you're writing. So for example, here's a query that I have in Google and it's showing the PAA, the people also ask, and the SEO Minion web browser extension will essentially scrape down all of these different questions a lot of them and export them into a spreadsheet where you can choose which ones you want to add to your blog post. I covered SEO Minion recently in a video that I made about writing content on your website. I'll put a link to that video in the video description as well as everything that I talked about in this video will also be linked down below in the video description. Thanks for watching this video. Please support the channel by smashing the like button. That's the thumbs up. It'll take you a split second and that's how you can go to support the channel. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.